Communication is something that we do every day. We communicate in order to give information, to receive information, to talk, to express our feelings. Communication is a process of sending and receiving information either, either through verbal or nonverbal. Verbal which means either it can be spoken or written, meaning the use of words. Nonverbal, it pertains to hand gestures, signals, facial expressions, behavior. Communication has its processes, principles, and ethics. Communication process. Communication process is composed of different of several stages and elements in which these elements can be a barrier or can be a hindrance in order to attain successful communication. First element of the communication process is source. Source is the sender of the message. And the next will be message. Message, this is the information being sent by the source or the sender to the recipient. Encoding. This is the process of transferring data or message into something understandable to the listener or receiver. Next is channel. Channel, this is the method used to convey the message. An example of channel would be written, a mail, email, telephone, through a text or interview. Next is decoding. Once the message is sent, the recipient will decode the message. Decoding it is the process of understanding the information received. And next is the receiver, the recipient. The, re the receiver is the recipient of the message and soon to be the sender. Next is feedback. Feedback, it is a mechanism which shows that there is successful communication process. It can be seen as gestures, body language, facial expression, and feedback can be vocal, which can be a... Uh, can be spoken or a written remark. Context. This is the setting, the situation, the environment wherein the communication takes place. To summarize the communication process, communication processes is composed of different stages and elements. These are the source, the message, encoding, channel, decoding, receiver, feedback, and context. Next is communication principles. Communication principles, the first one is clarity. Clarity pertains to the clearness and the purpose of the message. The message should be clear using appropriate language and communication channels. Next is conciseness. Conciseness pertains to the briefness of the message that suits to its purpose. Next is completeness. Completeness, even if the message is, is brief, it must be complete and accurate and has the information needed. Organization. Organization refers to the logical flow of ideas and transition from one point to another. The next is empathy. Empathy, the message should be sensitive and must be, must be in the interests of the receiver. And the last communication principles would be flexibility. Flexibility. Due to the indifference of the communication styles, the communicator should be versatile and know how to adapt and connect with their audience through modifying the message to avoid misunderstanding and misinterpretation. The last thing that we'll be discussing is the communication ethics. The first communication ethics would be active and respectful listening. Communicators must be actively listening to what the other communicator is saying. This can relate to the one-mouth rule in which other communicators aren't allowed to talk or share their opinion until the speaker is finished. It's like one speaker at a time. Active listening allows you to decode the message more accurate. Next is avoiding prejudice. Always have an open mind. Not all speakers are the same and not everything you know is right. We might learn something new from the speaker. so. Let's give it a shot and always be open to all. Next is showing commitment and genuine interest. Being committed means giving sufficient time and effort in attaining a successful discussion. 
commitment and genuine interest is also done or seen in providing truthful information as well as receiving truthful information. And the last communication ethics is respecting social cultural beliefs and practices of others. Communicators, speakers, and the audience are always different. They can be from different countries, different races, different, they have different beliefs and traditions and cultures. We must be sensitive to what message we are portraying and sending. We must have respect in their tradition, beliefs, and cultures. And in respecting social culture, beliefs, and practices of others, we must be culture sensitive because some beliefs may go off as offensive or a sign of disrespect in other cultures that, that would cause misunderstanding and misconception that might have a bigger and unwanted punishment. So we should practice the communication ethics to in order for us to improve our personality to improve our be being and to be to improve our communication skills and that's all and i hope you learned from me today and i'll see you soon bye